You're listening to the Infinite Banking Mastery Podcast. Did you know that you could build a tax-free pool of wealth that's liquid and accessible all your life while building your retirement nest egg? Gain full control of your financial future and stop relying on the government and banks. The wealthy have already discovered this wealth building secret. Now it's your turn to get financially secure without following the conventional wisdom that keeps you in debt to banks. Now here's your host, Valerie LaRoque. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to today's podcast. As usual, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate that you listen in. Today I wanted to talk about finding the money to get started for infinite banking, to start your infinite banking policy. Where do I find the money? Where does it come from? A lot of people have this question because they really want to get started and they're not sure how they're going to fund this policy. So I wanted to list off just some ways or locations where you can be looking for money or what get your mind rolling and thinking about what you could do and where you could be looking for your premium dollars. So of course, the first way I'm going to state is kind of the obvious, a no-brainer, your monthly cash flow. What does your monthly cash flow look like? Do you have extra resources in your monthly cash flow? What are you saving into? And do you want to continue to do so? For example, I'm sure many of you are saving into a retirement plan of some sort. A lot of people that I've been talking to lately actually would like to scale that back and maybe just contribute up to the match into their account. Of course, this is 100% up to you. I'm not going to tell you to take away money from that if that's something that you believe in, that you want to do, that you want to have as a diversified place to have your money. But it is a place to look. If you're funding it very heavily or you're not receiving a match, maybe think about scaling that back. If you want to start funding a whole life policy and you're not sure where to get the resources or you'd like to boost them up, you'd like to save more into a contract than you otherwise would be able to. So you could look to your retirement plan and how much you're saving into that. One thing to consider is that when you do, if you were to take away some funding from your 401k savings or or whatever, that that's going to make a difference to your taxable income. Because when you put money in a pre-tax place, like a 401k or an IRA, you are not taxed on that portion of that money in that year. So that might offset your taxes. Your taxes might be a little different. They're not going to be exactly what you've been paying. You're going to have to pay a little bit more because you're paying tax on that money now instead of waiting until a later date to pay the taxes when they very well could be higher than they are today. So actually, I don't find anything wrong with paying taxes on that money today when taxes are on sale, being that taxes are very likely to go up. And when you're retired, they could be higher than they are now for you, especially if you have less write-offs, like you pay off your house and now you don't have a house write-off, different things, your kids move out, you don't have as many write-offs and your income hopefully is not a lot lower than it was before when you were working because, or before you retired, because you're going to still need a reasonable amount of income to enjoy life and to do the things you want to do to protect against unexpected medical expenses and things like that. So you're going to have to pay that tax at that time. And at that time, we don't know what the tax rates will be. Certainly they could be higher than now. And many of us expect them to be higher. And a lot of clients are thinking they're going to skyrocket. And so just having that protection, not having to be worried about, well, Uncle Sam could come and take a larger portion of my retirement dollars than I would expect them to right now when I'm saving that money away. So people think, oh, I like that deduction right now. The deduction's great this year. I don't want to pay so much in taxes. I want that deduction. And so people really like that. But also we got to keep in mind, what is the tax rate going to be later? And would it have been better to take that, to pay the taxes now while they're on sale? I like to say on sale, according to historical tax rates, because they've been a lot higher in our history. So that's one place you could look if you're wondering where to get money in your monthly cash flow out of your monthly cash flow to start funding a policy. In addition to, of course, just looking at your budget and realizing, oh, well, I have this much money that I could put towards a policy every month. Or let's say you're saving every month into a savings account, a certain amount. Maybe we could take that dollar value or a portion of that dollar value. Maybe you don't want to take the whole thing. Maybe you want to take a portion. 
Certainly, I strongly believe that saving money into a life insurance policy is going to be much safer than saving it in the bank anyway. So I like to house all my savings dollars in my life insurance policy. I have very high premiums for my policies because that's where all my savings goes. And it helps me to stay on track for saving a good amount of money towards retirement because I have premiums that I'm paying rather than just how much do I feel like saving this month. So it kind of helps to keep me on track for that. And of course, there is some flexibility with the policy if for some reason I was unable to fund at the level that I set up for myself. But that's one way that I save into my policies is that instead of saving into a savings account at a bank, I save into my life insurance policies. So you may be able to redirect your monthly savings or some portion of your monthly savings. Sometimes when I'm talking to different people, I will hear, well, maybe I should wait until I'm debt-free to begin my policy. I mean, really, when are you going to be debt-free? How long will it take? Are you really actively focusing on it? Is it going to happen in the next six months or maybe a while, or maybe you're going to need to charge again for something else? Certainly life happens and it may take you longer than expected to become debt-free. So I like to say, get started with what you can as soon as you can, rather than waiting until you're debt-free, because we can plan to take over that debt anyway, and then help you to become debt-free to those outside banks. And even if you are finally get to the point where you're thinking, okay, I'm getting, I'm almost debt free. I can do this. There's always something to pay for. There's always something that comes up. There's always something that can throw off your monthly budget. So I think just get in the hang of it, get used to a certain premium amount that you are comfortable with, that you can fund and you're, and you feel good about when you start knowing that our intention can be, if it's a priority for you to then pay off that debt. I think just trying to get over the mindset of, Paying everything in cash is another thing. People will want to save up money, savings account at the bank, and save up a certain amount to be able to buy whatever it is they want to buy. Purchase things in cash. This is very embedded in a lot of people. And of course, that is the second best way, I would say, to purchase something. If it was a large purchase and it was something you were contemplating financing or leasing, like for a car, certainly it is the best way to purchase that thing in cash if you're not doing some form of banking. Banking through a whole life policy is the best, but of course, I've said before, you can bank really through anything. However, banking using a whole life policy is going to be the best. So saving up that money to buy the next thing you want to purchase in cash, it would be better to save up that money into a life insurance policy and then go purchase the thing that you want to purchase. You're going to trap all those dollars into your policy before you spend them, and they're going to then earn for you for the rest of your life. They're going to be guaranteed to earn uh, the crediting rate of the insurance company and then also the dividends. If it is a mutual life insurance company, then all of that money will be earning the guaranteed crediting rate. So it's best to trap that earning power into your policy as much as of your dollars as you're able to. But another place to look if you're looking for freed up cash, where am I going to get premium dollars from, is your debt payments. Are you overpaying things, overpaying credit cards, overpaying student loans, overpaying mortgages? Oftentimes, clients and people are overpaying credit cards because they want to get it paid off, of course. So your minimum payment is, say, $200 a month, and you're sending in $500 or $1,000 to be able to get that thing paid off. Great. I mean, that is great. We generally do want to pay that off. But if you are starting a whole life policy and you're wanting to build it up with as much as you can, because of course the years are your best friend, years are your greatest asset. So having as much cash in as soon as you can is going to help grow the pot bigger as you age. So being able to redirect those overpayments on your credit cards or student loans or mortgages to your policy where you can build equity, build cash value in your policy that then you can turn around and do the same thing you were going to do, pay off those credit cards, pay off those student loans, pay off your mortgage. For some clients, I have put together payoff schedules for paying off the mortgage 
uh, certainly for paying off credit cards and student loans. And again, I've mentioned before in, in a previous podcast that I don't always think it's the best thing to pay off the mortgage in a hurry. But if that's something that's a priority for you, we certainly can make it a priority and build spreadsheets to show you how that will be possible to cycle the money first through your banking policy and then pay off your mortgage. Your mortgage is likely to get paid off faster that way. And then you can redirect your mortgage payment back into your policy and to replenish those funds for future use or your retirement when you want to use it in retirement. In this scenario, if you were to wait until the credit cards are paid off, or maybe you're on a 15-year mortgage and you want to get that thing paid off so you have that monthly cash flow freed up and you're waiting five years or more, or even if just a few years, just think of the time that that lops off of your long-term growth on your policy because the longer you have it, the more amazing it becomes. So you don't want to shorten that time frame if you don't need to. We can just start with what makes sense, start with what you're available, with what's available to start to begin with, and then we can grow it from there. Another place to look is, do you have money that's just sitting somewhere? Sitting in a CD, sitting in a money market account, or a brokerage account where you do investments that are not considered retirement investments or 401ks or anything like that. If you have money sitting somewhere, and maybe you want to use some of that, maybe you'd like to move the money in your CD or your money market over to your policy, we can sometimes use funds that you want to use to front load a policy in the first year. We have to do some maneuvering with the numbers and make sure it'll work out. But oftentimes we can front load those policies in the first year or over the first one or two years, we can certainly work out a plan to move that money that's sitting if you would like to use it to help fund your policy. We could also use it as the main paid up additions for the contract over a certain number of years. There's just a lot of things we can do with that. And a lot of clients will say, oh, I have this money sitting over here. We could use that. Another thought is sometimes people will say, oh, well, I'd like to get started, but I don't really have as much money as I'd like, but can I use my tax return even though it's October and I can't use my tax return for another few months? And so, yes, we can do that. We can structure a policy where you can begin before you receive your tax return money and still plan to fund the policy using those dollars. So we can structure a plan knowing that that money is coming in the future and then plan to use a portion of it or some amount. Just We'll just plan together, pick a number that makes sense for your paid up additions. And we can use that money to fund your paid up additions for the year. And we could do that every year if that is what makes sense, or we can make a plan around that, or we could incorporate it into your funding plan going forward. Are you saving up money to put a down payment on real estate? We could use that money. You could decide to fund that money into your policy, turn around and buy that real estate. Now, of course, it will depend on how much of that money you need to buy the real estate, how soon, how close you are to buying the real estate, but we can make up a plan to use the money that you are saving up to buy or your real estate investments and then cycle it through your policy so that you don't lose the earning power on that for the rest of your life while you're also buying your other asset of real estate. Remember that this is an and asset. You can run your money through your policy. You can choose to do this and whatever other investment you are passionate about, such as something like real estate. You don't have to choose which one am I going to do. You can do both. You can use the money to fund your policy and then turn around and use the same funds to purchase your real estate. So basically what it comes down to is I wouldn't wait to start. I think it's important to start when you can. I think it's important for sure to start with a plan that makes sense. Even if you have really almost no money to fund a banking policy, we would start with term insurance or something to lock in your insurability to make sure that you have this as an option going forward. Nobody ever knows what's going to happen to their health tomorrow. And so locking in your insurability is a big deal. Even if for some reason you do need to wait six months to begin this or a year or longer, at least if you lock it in with a, with a term insurance plan, you're able to then convert that plan later and begin your policy when you are able to. I have a couple stories of people that I was working with and while we were working together became uninsurable before we were able to be approved. I was working with one gentleman 
who was gung ho and excited, signed the application, everything's all good. Then he has to go to the doctor, something's bothering him in his ear, and there was a tumor behind his ear. And so he was uninsurable, not able to move forward. I have another person that I was talking with who was doing great, seemed to be in great health, energetic, fit, everything. But then all of a sudden, something was happening with maybe her neurological system. And that she did not discover until after she had signed an application ready to move forward. And then this happened, had to go to the doctor, and now she's uninsurable. So things can happen in the blink of an eye. So it's important to lock in your insurability when you're healthy and able to do so. And then we can build the plan later or we can build on your plan. You can always lock in that insurability to have, make sure you have enough coverage in total and then also pair it together with the whole life policy. I talk about this a lot. Acquiring a whole life policy with what's affordable and then covering the difference or building up your total coverage with an additional term policy that's convertible later. And that is locking in your insurability. Even if you can't even afford it all, just begin with the whole life policy today. Let's meet, let's connect, let's figure it out. Let's figure out a plan that would work for you that where you would be able to at least lock in insurability and build a plan later when you are ready, when you are able to do so. So that's all I have for you today. I hope that gave you some ideas on where to look for premium if you're wanting to start this and you're not sure where to get those dollars from. If you would like my help, if you would like to work with me and find out together how you could make this work for you and and get a policy and a plan started for you and your family, please reach out. I would love to meet with you, love to talk with you. My email address for you to reach me is Valerie at Alpha Omega Wealth dot com. And yeah, reach out. Let me know how I can help you. Hope you have a great week. Take care. This is the podcast factory.com.